to the uh, post weekend match the that we're uh, currently hosting on the Hardcore League Discord. It's been an incredibly busy weekend. Uh, over 12 matches, 11 different teams, and uh, I don't even know how many members participated. But thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is just going to be a little bit of a, a debrief between uh, myself, uh, Bosch, and Crazy. And uh, we're just going to have a little chat. Maybe a couple of the team leaders are going to come by. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, just uh, sit back, relax, and uh, chill with us. So as we're doing this, I kind of want to ask Bosch, what was his thought on the uh, 10 versus WPO match? Uh, what what did you, did you see some of the strengths that the WPO was, and what did you see some of the strengths that Pin had? Uh, well, I think for one, uh, Pin's tanks uh, kind of took control of the map. There wasn't a whole lot that they can do. Now, granted, they have come back and said, you know, all right, now we've, we've already gone back and watched, and uh, we've come up with plans to take out your tanks. It won't be an issue next time, but uh, the tanks moving with the squads, I believe, really made a big difference. Right, and, and I totally agree with that. You know, and I did see some of the chats that were happening on the Hardcore League chat, and um, and they were saying we, we've got we've got a special gift for you. Taking so. objective, so, right? <laughs> like they're going to be planning a lot more than what we had anticipated, but you know, that's uh, something we'll really work on later on. So let me ask you this: What are some of the matches that you have seen personally on this fight that? Uh, came to your mind and it would totally blew you away. Well, uh, which round are we talking about now again? Because, the, I mean, I've just seen, you're going to have to really narrow it down for me, and my apologies. I've just seen so much incredible battlefield played over the last 48 hours. Um, just put that to me again. Well, let me, okay, here's another way. When you're not shoutcasting and you're watching a match, which match kind of stood out to you the most? Um, well, I think uh, I think it has to go to to enjoy, um, uh, you know, the match I've literally just covered. The um, oh my god, I'm getting brain freeze. The enjoy versus uh, rift. Rift, thank you. Enjoy versus rift. That that was uh, an incredibly tight performance. Uh, you know, as far as games go, I think that's probably one of the tightest games that I've covered. And uh, to see Enjoy come back after Rift's initial performance, you know, the, you know, Rift came out very aggressively. You know, it, it's, I don't think you've got stamina or team stamina as such in a game, but there is, it's definitely hard to maintain if you, you know, that sort of level of um, ability to respond all over the map, like we saw from Rift um, in the initial sort of couple of rounds. Uh, to maintain that, the whole for the whole match, it, it, you know, it does take a lot of concentration. But I think uh, for Rift, where they're at right now, as a, a quite a new community, uh, you know, I think we're going to see incredible things from them. And, and uh, I think so. Yeah, with that. Yes, uh, Miss Miss Taco, it's it's good to have you. Miss Taco, it's just good. Miss <laughs> Taco, <laughs> thank you for coming I, for that. I can't wait I'm to hear that back. Hey, Taco, what's going on, my buddy? Just to explain, this is just a little uh, post-match debrief we're having. It's also going to be getting put into uh, Hardcore League's first podcast. Uh, so um, we were just discussing uh, your performance and uh, Enjoy's performance over the last sort of two hours. And uh, I think the resounding opinion is that, you know, that was just an incredible match. So, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're real happy with our performance. Um, we do have a, a few honor system uh, disagreements maybe, but uh, overall, I'm, I'm real happy with the way my team played. Uh, we had four guys on our team that had just joined the team this week. We had one guy who just got straight in there. We missed a lot, of our, a lot of our stars are out on vacation, so so we're real happy with the way I enjoy matchmaking. Yeah, it seems to go well, good. You're you were going against uh, one of the Hardcore League's veteran teams, so, uh, you know, props to you guys. You did an awesome That's job. Definitely high top to Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just happy we turned it around because we played the, the match with the PTP earlier and it did not do so well. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of my guys were down, but we, we uh, uh, used that as motivation and came back. Yeah. Gave, gave it hell at least. 
He really did. Nice. There, there was definitely resounding opinion for him coming back to that. Uh, speech, I think to anyone in the uh, in Twitch. Uh, and you know, I think one of your your match was definitely one of the better ones. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely have to see how things look uh, retrospectively. Cause if there's any points you want to raise, then uh, then we can do that. I'm obviously, um, uh, you know, uh, there's just a lot of, uh, it's a lot to sort of get used to for people. And uh, but no, I think fantastic performance from both teams. Uh, 11 matches though, well actually it was 12 matches, 11 teams, uh, 12 matches and god knows how many players in uh, 48 hours. We have lost uh, so is, I take it everyone's feeling fairly tired now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, been a, it's been a crazy weekend, but an awesome weekend. Yeah, no, We're, right, uh, Pink Taco, so going forward, what are some of your plans that you're going to be doing, not specific plans, but some preparations for the next match who you're going up against. Um, who else is in your sights that you are going to be taking on? Um, we're actually, uh, we're talking to Ethan Bolt now about uh, doing a front lines match with them. Um, nice. There's, there's the EXM, we talked to them a little bit, uh, an icon. And, I mean, we want to try and get a match with all the guys before the end of the season. So, okay. uh, I already got feelers out to my team trying to get some roster set up. Um, like I said, we had a lot of guys that were failing graduation parties. So, I'm hoping to come back and start getting some bigger games together, too. So, right. Uh, and, you know, from, from my aspect of it, then, uh, one of your heavy hitters, I noticed that he wasn't there. Um, I think Nysai, um Along with the way you guys work together as a group, I think and I feel that you this would have been a totally a rift win victory over this 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 angel game. Yeah, uh, no, we, we we actually talked about that after the match. Nasai uh, alone, he's a, he's an incredible player. Uh, right, and you know, he just I was, does not miss, and and he's on the objectives all the time. And, uh, Dubas another one of our players we didn't have on there. And private files, another one of the good players we didn't have on there. So once we get kind of those four members back, yeah, and we're looking to, to really compete in this league. Definitely. And from my standpoint, just looking out with him, you know, I, I admire you guys. You guys are brand new coming in. You've thrown down with some of the best players. You, you run around with some of the best players. You know, uh, it's all a op learning opportunity from a hardcore league aspect and from a, a, an organizational. Um, I admire you guys. I like playing with you guys. You guys are a lot of fun. Um, and so I just want to say for me, keep up the good work, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, we, uh, we, also, we have a blast playing with you guys, too. I, I think a couple of your guys anyway. <laughs> so, looking to the future, <clears throat> I mean, I know it's a bit too early for you to um, sort of establish any points that you guys will want to work on. Um, <clears throat> have you identified any areas as a team leader that sort of areas that you could? You, and this is something I ask all team leaders. Is, so don't take it personally. I, is there any areas that you think your team can perform better in? I think we can perform better in every area. Um, is, is the one specific area that sort of concerns you? Uh, specifically, I, I'm, I'm really trying to just get my guys to do some better practicing. And uh, I mean, our our team has actually not even been in the league for two months. It'll be two months on the 28th, so we're just a few sh few days shy of being two months old. And before that, um, at most two months. Before that, we were playing together, so we really came together and formed the team, you know, right after we came together. So we haven't even played with each other much, so we're still kind of trying to get everyone on the same page and, yeah. and you know, so where they don't need as much communication, kind of know what the other guy's thinking. So we're just trying to play and uh, get to know each other. Um, and you know, our well, communication has been has made it, it's been huge, huge improvements in our communication, you know, squad to squad. Uh, we still have to work on some things like uh, a little bit of squad hopping, maybe, and, and kind of designating certain areas for different squads to maintain. But uh, I think the end joint match, I think we, we pull a lot of stuff together. You know, there were a few times where we kind of got a little spread out and we had to kind of reel ourselves back in the squad up again. Um, 
but yeah, overall, I, I think it's just experience. I think we just need more experience to get familiar with everybody. I mean, from my perspective, uh, you know, and um, you've literally all the points highlight. But the, I think one of the areas I've identified is that the teams that do teams do well consistently are those teams that you know they try and play the same players consistently. Uh, they try and play the same players in the same roles. Uh, you know, everyone gets comfortable. Um, and I think from a, um, a from a squad leader point of view, really you just want to be uh, you know, sorry, you squad leaders and just on that get it in Face um, off. Effectively, you guys don't even need to be in the same form of communication. Just as long as if you guys, are, you know, are not some great, you don't. Essentially, it is generally now. Uh, as long as everyone's got an idea of what the overall strategy is and what to do if I'll something goes it. wrong, in, you know. So everyone's got a, a proactive and a reactive plan. <coughs> Yeah, a yeah. lot of these things do get broken down by experience, but you know the key thing is is just make sure that your chain of command is 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 in place and the people yeah, and it's based on people that can you know be, who have that capability of reading the map and then reacting to what the enemy team is doing. Yeah, I, I think all my squad leaders are pretty good at that. Really, the the squad the squad communication just comes down to uh, we know we have to get the you know a certain objective to which one of us is going. You know. Um, it, it's really like all the squad leaders kind of know where we need to go next. It's just a matter of letting the other squad leaders know who's going to cover that area. That's that's really the only thing we need to do squad to squad communication wise. Um, so yeah, my squad leaders are pretty good at identifying, and it's usually pretty instantaneous. We're all like, we got to get back to who's going top belt. Okay, great. Or you know, we can split off two guys from two squads to send them back. So if you had. So yeah. If you had anything you could say to any teams that might join up or think about joining up, you know, being a new team, uh, what advice or uh, info uh, would you have to share with them? Um, I would say um, you want to get yourself players that are passionate and are willing to go and, and put real practice in. You know, it's, it's more than just getting on at night with a bunch of friends and, and running around the map. Um, you need guys that are passionate and willing to go, you know, a couple hours each week, you know, two hour session to get together and, and really, you know, work on the things that you're lacking and, and decide who's going to be, you know, be a big one. That's something we're going to start working on now, you know, get some, some designated pilots and, and stuff like that. So I think just being organized and, uh, and they go for quality members over, you know, just don't look at the guys that have the 3.0 kill death because sometimes they're not the greatest teammates. And they kind of just run around and do their own thing and that, and that doesn't help you. You know, a guy with, you know, a 0.5 kill death could be more beneficial if he's, you know, working and he's throwing out med packs or dropping ammo or you know, holding down like spawn points. I think, I think it's just, it's to just get, get yourself a good group of guys that are passionate and, uh, and they just put the work in. Right, and I couldn't agree with you even more. You know, I caught some of your some of your gameplay in regards to how you were moving your tank around. You know, and, and uh, honestly, you you run some of the, the sweetest looking skins there on your little baby tank. I call it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not. But, I am not our tanker. I'm not a designated tanker. Uh, wasn't the next one. So I was the next in line, I guess. So I I, I hope I held my own with it. You did hold your own with it, and you know, and that's the thing for us being as one leader, as the leader of the organization is, you know, there are things that you have to sacrifice that you want to do to, for the better of the, rest of the group. You know, that just comes with experience, and, and you know, and let's call it shots out. And, okay, guys, you know, uh, we know that a sentry kit is available. Joe is not here today, so I'm going to run the tank. I'm going to sacrifice my position. I'm going to put somebody else in my position on this squad, and so forth. And, you know, that, that comes down just to, to playing the game and experience, especially when it comes to trying to find a tank group or an airplane group or whatever it may be. But, yes, it's I have to agree. Uh, I know that you yeah. just came out of a team meeting uh, if prior to before jumping in here. So, in your mind, who was Riff's MVP? Who was Riff's MVP? I think Riff is a whole thing. I mean, I, I really can't. I honestly can't pick out anyone. Um, I think everyone worked as a team. I, I was really happy with our enjoy match. You know, like I said, a couple of new guys that really hadn't 
hadn't played with us much. Um, <clears throat> you know, they they took what they did what they had to do and what they did done. I really, I really don't. Nobody stands out. I think the team as a whole. I was just happy with everybody. If, if I could, sit, if the side, I'd probably just take this. <laughs> Because you guys, you guys have played with him, you know he's a position player. He's a position player. But Mick James in there, he runs around. Pro Wiley's actually a pretty good player, too. Right. So the, Spoken like a true team leader saying, my whole, my whole, my whole team is in the that Yeah, is, I completely agree with that. That is, that is yeah. uh, totally such an admirable looking out for him in the end of an organization. Speaking to the leader of it, so that is very accurate. Yeah, no, I mean that—that—that's my role in the team. Is, is just the lead. I'm, I'm not the best shooter on our team by far. I'm the best player. Um, I just try and delegate those duties to, to who. To, I try and put guys in positions where they the most benefit us. It's really that's really what my part comes down to. Right, right. Go ahead. We definitely. Uh, Definitely seen some excellent performances. We, I think, you know, I think the rate of matches that we're having in the, uh, the communities that we're seeing in regularity in the communities we're seeing, <coughs> it's great to see a community start at the beginning of the season. You know, come in not too sure of itself, a bit, um, you know, unconfident, and then to see those guys develop. You know, sometimes they get a few a win losses, losses wins here and there, and you know, to see those teams mold and see those people come together. I think it's something that's exceptionally unique, and um, to the to the sort of like competitive battlefield world because uh, again, we love this game psychology with it because of the game and the way you sort of manage to play it and attracts a certain kind of person. And that kind of person is generally someone who wants to work alongside other people and that transfers as well and communicates into uh, the real world. I think it's that passion that everyone's got for the hardcore lean community. Um, you know, it's just a, a, a catalyst for uh, Hey Deb, what's going on buddy? Uh, we're just doing a little bit of a uh, post-match debrief slash podcast. Uh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I do it for the women. That's why. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> hey, tell me real quick. I'm just jumping in here to find out who won the Rift Enjoy match. Uh, it was not Rift. It, it was, was close not, though. It, it was, was a close, close match. match. It was amazing. It, it, Rift was in the lead the last time I checked on it, so I wasn't sure. I, it looked like it was some really, really good matches. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Icon ended up winning the, uh, or not Icon, Enjoy ended up winning the, uh, you know, map. But the first map, uh, they only won by one ticket. One ticket. One ticket. Really? Yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah. honestly, my, I was sweating stress like doing the maps. <laughs> yeah. I bet, I bet, I bet. That is that is by far the closest one we've ever had. Especially yeah. 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 And uh, so it was uh, it was a a breaking hardcore history for two reasons. First well battlefield history actually. First uh -huh. competitive night map ever played. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Um, and uh, yeah, first uh, First, uh, bring in match one by one point. <laughs> nice. yeah, I, I wish I would have went. And there was some the good bloopers one, in there as well. <laughs> if anyone made notes of the times and wants to go back and make a blooper reel, then there, was some really good there was a blooper reel, and there were somebody who looked like he had his arm caught back, <laughs> and throw a grenade running around for probably about two minutes. Then, yeah, next thing I, I know, he was. Those, uh, war crimes for you, too, KLW oh, him yes, I, I saw. In one of my matches, I saw a guy run a guy over with a car and then drug him for like. I, I saw that. Call it two oh, minutes. Shit. Right, that needs to get in there. So we need to. Um, the right, yeah, we definitely. We need to get these people who are willing to sit down and edit through uh, hours and hours of footage and send it to us. That's why I was thinking we need to have another clip competition because then people send all their clips to us. <laughs> <laughs> No, we really, we really do. We really do. Now that we've ran so many competitive matches, we need to have a competitive match clip competition where well, you, you have know, to. Ken can probably so. 
throw something in there if they uh, if they actually were recorded. And I was I was thinking that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Lipping it. Yeah. I'm trying we're not gonna to swear. We're going to need to contact uh, Twitch technical support. For that one there. But um, <laughs> another one I saw was man, animosity went on probably like I don't know, like a 10 to 15 kill run in that riff match on yeah, uh, <laughs> on Suez. Man, he come up from Delta to Echo and dropped so many people. That was a war crime in itself. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, I can't remember who was up in the, who it was up in the plane, but someone, whoever, whoever it was, it took out. I think uh, I went on. I went took out the three planes in the first uh, 20 seconds of uh, Novell Nights. I can't remember who it was. Uh, I did. Yeah, see, um, we don't really have any pilots, but we knew we knew the air was going to be a problem. Been some nights. Yeah. Well, again, I that's where your experience come in. Goat Almighty swatted one of SWAT's planes out of the air with a tank during their match, even though Goat lost. Goat Almighty did smoke one of the planes right out the air. I but, did um, see that. I am, uh, I'm exhausted, guys. I'm going to jump out of here. I'll let you guys get back to it. Um, good job, everybody. Everybody that uh, was involved with oh the teams, the shoutcasters working behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I couldn't do it without you guys, so definitely. I appreciate it. Another good weekend of matches. Um, we did have our very first DDQ. Um, a team get disqualified this weekend. Not really? Yeah, Goat. Goat got disqualified. They didn't bring enough players for their uh, EXO match. How many they were there? Uh, like four to six, somewhere in there. Uh, was yeah. that EXO's first match? No, no. Uh -uh. It was, uh, I think there's a second more. Third match. Third or fourth. Yeah. Third. So I've got two questions before you get off dead. Uh, first one is, back to uh, Pink Taco Unicorn, is where do you see Riff going from here in six months, one year, five years? What is your perspective and what is your ultimate outcome and goal? Uh, as, far as, as far as a competitive team? Yes. Um, I don't know. It's kind of too early to tell um, with the amount of matches that they played. But I, I would say... I would say based on based on the members that they currently have and, and what I know about the members that they currently have, that's where it all starts when you're running a competitive team is uh, from the leadership down. And I think they have really good leadership. I think they just uh, they just need to get some more competitive matches under their belt and they'll start learning uh, learning the flow of these competitive matches. They'll start hearing the tactics to counter the tactics of the other teams. And I think they'll do good. Right, right. And I think Taco. Your perspective, where you're going to be from today. I love months, pink 20. tacos. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. No, what was your question about pink taco as far as what? Where did oh. he see his? Where do I? Yes. I'm, I'm open. I have a solid, a solid team that I can run 24 v 24s or even 32 v 32s. And, and I hope we go undefeated. And I hope we're one of the, the top teams in the league, and I, I think we can do it if we keep working the way we have been. Get some solid practice. Right. Get all these guys on the same page. And I would have to uh, agree with both you and Dead. I uh, think y'all's potential are just <laughs> as far as you want to take it, and I believe with Dead, I agree with Dead and uh, from the leadership. Um, you guys have got a really good uh, foundation, and you can build from that, and, uh, you know, you can go you can go pretty high places. Yeah, I mean, we have we have a couple guys on our team, Nick James, Pro Wiley, uh, Masai. We have a lot of guys that are really passionate about this. You know, we all love the league. We love going in there late night and just mixing it up and with some of the other, you know, squadding up with yeah. some of the other teams in the league. It's really – it's a blast. So, Well, and we still are working on our team servers, and uh, that list will be posted soon <clears throat> so that – We'll kind of throw it out there that, hey, this is the server to jump in on this night, that night, and the other night. Try to get all of our team's servers promoted and out there for the community. So not just the hardcore league teams will know where to go, but the community itself will also know where uh, where they can find teams on any given night. 
And uh, yeah, just one thing awesome. I would say, and this is again to any new community starting out, uh, a lot of this is going to be about exposure to the community and what we need from new communities is for them to go out and set up social media that looks uniformed across the across the sort of thing we can help you out with that um you know ideally get the hardcore league logo in there as well so you know we can get a bit of uh, you know it's about pushing the the league and the, the the communities and vice versa um you know once once you've got your social media account set up you know we will give you that following we will be able to help you know because we have so many followers of our own we have so many uh, people that we network and have partnerships with that we you know we can send a lot of game people from you know all sorts of different areas so you know the key is social media and to have someone who's willing to be you know passionate enough to sit down there and put up four or five posts a day a minimum and generate content and excitement <coughs> for your community Right. And I totally agree with that. And, you know, I'm looking here at the at the thing here and, and I see a cat. Whose cat? Is that your cat? Yeah, that's my cat. <laughs> what, is, what, what is the cat's name? That's Jessica and she's my streaming compadre. We, uh, a few people have met Jessica before. She is definitely an internet sensation. I think she's actually got a bigger <clears throat> following than me. On, uh, wait, wait, what do you mean by that? Does she have like her own page or? Uh, no, but I think I am going to make her own page. Actually, you just give me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you guys are just now joining in, we have Bosch, uh, community leader with Hardcore League. You have uh, a crazy Indian here with uh, community, uh, Hardcore community uh, assistant community leader. Excuse me, um, and we have. Uh, KO Hitman Pike here. We're kind of doing a post interview this weekend. Uh, we have Dead in here, and we also have Pink Taco. Um, so we're just kind of talking over a little few things that we've seen, and you know, we we brought uh, Pink Taco in here as a post interview to his match against Enjoy. Which, by the way, if you did not see that, you missed that one heck of a game. Totally yeah, hands sure. down, one of the best ones I've seen all week. So. Uh, just to kind of give you a heads up, we're just in here chatting and about wonderful things that's going on in the league. Dad's got to bounce out, I do believe. He said he's tired. Hit me yeah, if you're tired. Out. It's like five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning your time. Um, and I probably will be getting five. off here. Twenty past five. I will Jeez. probably be getting off here after this is done. But anybody else have anything to say? No, I think that's pretty much it from everyone, just from me, KLW Hitman Pike, uh, to the podcast that we have just uh, decided to make impromptuly. Thanks for joining us. Uh, do keep an eye out for future podcasts that will be coming up. I will be uploading, uh, starting us a SoundCloud channel. And in the meantime, we've got plenty of matches coming up over the next couple of weeks, so do keep an eye out. And uh, if you haven't already signed up, then head over to www.hardcoreleague.co. Get yourself up, signed up with a with an account today. We'll try and get your account validated as soon as possible. If you can sign yourself up as a free agent, and uh, then it's your choice. You can sign up with one of the many communities. I think it's something like in the region of 80 free communities at the moment we've got. And uh, if that doesn't take your biscuit, you want a bit more freedom and you've got uh, 12 to 20 guys who are willing to follow you, then you can become a team leader with us. In the meantime, guys, have a fantastic week and we will see you next weekend. Thank you, guys. All right, man.